Good morning, students. I am Professor Sumita Parmar. I am the principal investigator for the subject of women's studies in Ipachala. Today, I will introduce to you this, the paper Women's Health, Women and Health. And we will do the first module, which is an introductory module, which is titled Women's Health, a Gender Perspective. So, paper 8, module 1, Women's Health, a Gender Perspective. This module has been written by Dr. B. Shubhra Shri, who is from the Rural Women's Social Education Center in Tamil Nadu, and uh, Ms. Bhuvaneshwari Sunil from the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Now, before we start the paper, let us look at the points that are going to be addressed in it. Let us look at the outline of this module. The first point, what is the need for a gender perspective in health at all? Why can't we have just a perspective on health? What is the importance of gender in perspective? That is the first point. Point number two is, the influence of feminist movements on policies and perspectives. What were their contributions? What did they campaign for? What did they achieve? Number three, a clear definition of what constitutes women's health. Number four, gender perspectives on women's health. The next one is the various gender concepts and the substratum indicators. This is followed by how gender constructs affect health. Next is the importance of gender analysis. And finally, approaches to gender-based disadvantages affecting women's health. So the first point, the need for a gender perspective. Now, we all know that gender differences percolate to different sections of society and are determined by class, by caste, by race and by ethnicity. And the social roles and responsibilities that are held by women make them more susceptible to certain kinds, certain particular illnesses and diseases. Because our society is patriarchal in nature and we are guided by patriarchal norms, these norms deny women the right to make decisions regarding their themselves, regarding their sexuality, regarding their reproduction. Again, biologically determined differences between men and women interact with socially constructed norms and often to women's disadvantage. The national and state policies also fail to consider the nature of gender relations and the existing social inequalities that are their consequence. Therefore, a gender approach in health while keeping in mind the biological factors, also considers the critical roles that social and cultural factors play between women and men in either promoting the health of women or of impeding it. Now let us look at the contribution of the feminist movements. The women's suffrage movement of the 19th century and earlier 20th century also, followed by the first wave of the women's liberation movement in the 1960s, followed by the second and the third waves in the West, and women's movements in many other parts of the world, including our own country. These movements, what did they do? They campaigned for legal and social rights of women and recognized that women's cultural and political inequalities were caused by sexist power structures. Now, you understand the meaning of sexist? 
sexism is something uh, discrimination on the basis of sex is called sexism. So, sexist power structures. Wider issues such as sexism in the workplace and the family, reproductive rights including abortion and contraception, violence against women were also addressed. So, basically these movements aimed at changing the social attitude towards women and the repealing of oppressive laws that were based on sex. Now, let us try and see what is women's health and let us try and define it clearly, so we understand what are the issues that would be involved in the domain of women's health. First of all, we need to understand that sex refers to the biological differences between men and women. For example, chromosomes, internal and external sex organs and hormonal makeups. On the other hand, gender refers to the social, the cultural and the historical construction of both femininities and masculinities. So, sex and gender interact both with the biological and the social variables that create differences between or within groups. The, the differences are also about the multiple roles women play in their daily lives. Women's health is not something defined by their biologically given sex, but by the broader understanding of the critical roles that they play and how social, cultural, political and other factors influence to protect or hinder the health of women. Gender perspectives on women's health. The United Nations coordinated an international conference on population and development in 1994 called the ICPD in Cairo, Egypt. And this conference emphasized the need for improving the reproductive health of women and promoting gender equity. Out of the eight international development goals, which we commonly refer to as the Millennium Development Goals or the MDGs, adopted by the UN in 2000, with the target to achieve them by 2015, number three was specifically for women and it aimed at achieving gender equality and the empowerment of women. 2015 is long gone and we are still far from achieving this goal. Gender perspectives on health. By asking questions such as who does what? Who has what? Who decides? Who needs what? Who wins? Who loses? Asking questions like these can help us to understand how certain specific aspects of gender and gender relations that could affect women's health are intricately and deeply woven into different cultures and very often they are invisible and escape attention. Therefore, a new approach to women's health is needed that will first problematize the medical norms that classify illnesses and diseases based on male norms. For example, myocardial infarction give importance to neglected health problems that mostly affect women. For example, fibromyalgia, infection of the urinary tract often called UTIs, musculoskeletal disorders, etc. And keep in mind the social, cultural, political and other factors 
that need to be integrated in the issue of women's health. Let us now examine some major concepts that are related to gender. I have just told you that gender is the social meaning given to being male or female in a particular time, particular culture, particular place. So, gender describes the different roles and relationships, the personality traits, the attitudes, behaviors, values, relative power and influence and beliefs that a particular society assigns to men or women. A very simple example, uh, men are often considered strong and rational and in, in contrast to that, women are considered to be emotional and weak. So, one of the most important concepts of gender is a gender division of labor. So, a sexual gendered division of labor. The market that employs both men and women's physical labor classifies what men will do and what women will do. For example, in agriculture, women are offered work like weeding, transplanting, threshing, etcetera which involve hard labor, but are poorly paid. On the other hand, men are given responsibility for cash crops, for operating mechanical equipment and overseeing the work of women and they are generally better paid. So, gendered power relations, this refers to the power relations that exist between a man and a woman, relations that are reinforced by the family, kinship systems, community and through various economic and political institutions at both the national and the international levels. Now, here is a diagram which we will study. It talks about gender concepts and its substratum indicators. So, you see here we have first the beliefs in society and from those beliefs come out gender norms, what is the normal thing for a particular gender. So, gender roles for men and women emerge out of the beliefs of society and then again this leads to the sexual division of labor. So, different activities and responsibilities are for men and different activities and tasks are for women. Again, there is a differential that comes out of this in terms of the access to and control over resources, over money and finally, the differential in decision making powers. Who decides? The person who decides is the person who has the resources and the person who has the power. The gender system feeds on its substratum to perpetuate and entrench gender stereotypes. So, gender operates in all kinds of institutions such as the family, the health systems, the legal systems and various kind of formal and informal institutions including the market. Now, let us see how gender constructs affect women's health. To give you very simple examples, the exposure to health risks, certain particular kinds of rules and responsibilities that women have expose them to various health risks. For example, cooking which is in the majority of the cases, vast majority is done by women. So, cooking and indoor pollution leads to pulmonary diseases. Then early marriages and women's role as reproductive beings of becoming mothers of nurturing often cause 
vesico vaginal fistulas these are typical feminine problems gender norms also govern the behavior of men and women as far as their own health their own well being is concerned many women do not perceive themselves as being even entitled to seek or invest in their health and well being they fail to recognize many health problems simply due to the lack of knowledge often they are so burdened with household work or lack support both physically and financially from family members to visit healthcare centers access to health services women have very limited power and resources to be able to access health care they can't even get health care further the power to control sexuality and very important and significant the use of contraception is also limited many times completely denied to women the gender norms that accept as normal men having sex with other women puts their wives at greater risks for std and hiv in fact thousands of innocent women are infected by std and hiv because of husbands who have multiple sex partners and because of no fault of their own the stigma attached to visiting an std clinic accompanied by other constraints such as money lack of time and decision making discourages women from seeking treatment thus gender is an important component in exploring the social determinants of health what is gender analysis why is it important now gender analysis is actually a tool that helps to first identify the underlying causes of illnesses or diseases so that they can be prevented or treated gender analysis explains how biological and social differences between men and women interact to produce differential health outcomes it explores how social beliefs about gender have a direct effect on health and how gender is constructed across different countries and different cultures what are the gender based disadvantages affecting women's health first of all there is a lack of sex disaggregated data required to understand the gender differentials in areas such as what are the health risks peculiar to women how much health information is accessible to women to what extent are health services accessible to women and to what extent are they accessed by women there is also a lack of gender integrated data in national policies and programs on this matter so the solution to the situation is gender mainstreaming gender mainstreaming we have divided it into two parts in this module the first is operational gender mainstreaming what is operational gender mainstreaming operational mainstreaming is that which is the integration of equality concerns into things like policies programs and projects to ensure that these have a positive impact on women 
and reduce gender inequalities. Operational mainstreaming is done by holding gender sensitization workshops in government departments, incorporating gender sensitization into the curricula of health professionals in medical education and including the gender angle at all stages of the medical research process. Point two is institutional mainstreaming. Now institutional mainstreaming involves addressing the internal dynamics of institutions such as their goals, what are their agendas, governance structures and procedures related to daily functioning, day to day functioning so that these support and they promote gender equality. And institutional mainstreaming also involves identifying and addressing gender considerations in health and within the organizations responsible for managing and delivering health care services. It is also responsible for the elimination of gender based discrimination in human resource procedures changing institutional rules and culture to create an environment supportive of gender equity and equality. At the international level, mainstreaming efforts are being made to integrate gender considerations into all research policies, programs, projects and initiatives. What are the challenges in mainstreaming gender. One of the biggest challenges, lack of considering gender as even part of human rights and social justice agendas is a major challenge. The health sac sector attributes all male and female differences to biology and it fails to recognize and examine gender issues in health problems and the de delivery of health services. Policy makers and program managers are unconvinced of any gender based inequalities in the domain of health care and of the need for gender mainstreaming. The health for informed the health processes are informed by the biomedical approach which fails to give importance to the relevance of understanding the social dimensions and determinants of health. So let's wrap up this module and just refresh our memories by going over the main points. Gender differences filter to different sections of society determined by class, caste, race and ethnicity. The social roles and responsibilities held by women put them to greater risks of certain particular illnesses and diseases. A gender approach in health, while not excluding biological factors, considers the critical roles that social and cultural factors and power relations play between men and women in pro promoting and protecting or becoming a hindrance to health. The women's liberation movements campaigned for legal and social rights of women and addressed wider issues such as female sexuality, inequalities in the workplace, sexism in the family, reproductive rights including abortion and contraception and violence against women. Sex refers to the biological differences between men and women such as chromosomes, internal and external sex organs, hormonal makeup and secondary sex characteristics while gender 
refers to the social, cultural and historical constructions of femininities and masculinities. It is the social meaning given to being male or female in a particular place and time. Sex and gender interact with the biological and social variables and these are the ones that create differences between groups. Gender operates at different levels in institutions such as the family, health systems, legal frameworks and all kinds of formal and informal institutions including the market. Gender constructs affect women's health in terms of exposure to health risks, health knowledge, health seeking behavior and access to health services. Gender analysis is a tool that shows us the gendered realities of day to day life and highlights how these realities can affect the health status, health decision and access to health of women. The intersectionality approach considers simultaneous interactions between gen different aspects of social identity as well as the impact of systems and processes of oppression and domination. Gender mainstreaming aims at integrating gender into the mainstream in all sectors and it is done in two ways. There are two types of mainstreaming gender, operational and institutional mainstreaming. Thus it becomes clear that the issue of women's health needs to be addressed at many levels, medical, social, political, economic and cultural. Thank you.